I'm Mike Bernhardt for the Exascale Computing Project. I'm here today with ECP's Deputy Director, Lori Dyson. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Great to have you here on the program with us. So, uh, boy, let's start out with something rather exciting. You have been named as one of HPC Wire's 2019 people to watch. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a big honor for you, and it's a big honor for the project. So, uh, with that, let's, let's talk about your role with the ECP and um, uh, maybe have a conversation that kind of gives the rest of the HPC research community a little bit more insight into who you are. Sure. So you, uh, you've held several roles over the years at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, several roles in leadership positions. Uh, what was it that inspired you to want to take on the job with the ECP? Mm -hmm. So the ECP is one of the largest and most important computing projects that the Department of Energy has ever undertaken. And so a chance to be a part of that in a leadership capacity uh, for something that has gotten so much attention and is so valuable to the department was very exciting for me. I also know many of the people in the leadership team. I think they're an excellent and outstanding group, very committed to the project and to what they're working on. And I really wanted the chance to work with them. And then finally, for me, it's the first time I've been involved in a formal project, uh, and by that I mean a DOE formal project, a 413 type project. So it was an opportunity for me to learn a lot, not only about the technical directions that the ECP is moving in and the applications that it's developing, but also about what does it mean to be a part of a formal project with uh, a lot of the project management uh, responsibilities that come along with that. Yeah, and it's first time for many of us That's in this right. type of a project. That's right. So, so basically, yeah. it's you know the excitement of the project, the people that yeah. you're working with, and the mm -hmm. chance to learn new things. Okay. So, um, what what skills in particular, or what experience in particular, from your years at Lawrence Livermore, uh, do you think really are going to help you, or you're going to draw most upon uh, mm -hmm. in your leadership position with ECP? Okay. So at Livermore and throughout my career with the Department of Energy, I've held leadership roles in project management, in program management, portfolio management, and also line management, managing research organizations or, or organizations with hundreds of people. And I think I'll actually draw on several of those experiences uh, from my past. So on the project management side, I was leading the Fast Math SIDAC Institute, which is a large not as large as ECP, is about a six and a half million dollar a year project, but it was multi-institutional and it spanned all the different laboratories and several universities. And so how you work with multi-institutional teams, that experience I'm bringing with me to the ECP. Uh, from my line management experiences, I've I run a research organization of about 125 people, the Center for Applied Scientific Computing at Livermore, and then also a larger department in information technology of about 400 people. And so the idea of uh, management through uh, hierarchical structures, so you're not managing people directly when you're talking about 400 people or like the ECP, a thousand people. Mm -hmm. uh, you're managing um, through several different layers. And so having those experiences in line management, I think I'll bring with me to the ECP. And then just how you deal with all the different styles of personalities that you get when you have 400 different people mm -hmm. uh, or a thousand different people, that's, that's something I will bring with me as well. Well, you're gonna need it too. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, it's a, I say that jokingly, but what a tremendous and yet so diverse team mm -hmm. uh, that we have assembled, but yes, it's incredible it's, it's when you see them come together. Team. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that I've been thrilled to learn about you and getting to work with you the past several months is that you're an exceptionally strong writer, oh, a you. great communicator <laughs> overall. Thank you. Uh, I got to see you at the ECP annual meeting and realized that you have an incredible stage presence and a, and a great speaking style as well. So um, it's gonna, your communication skills are going to help the project quite a bit. But let me ask you, what do you enjoy more, writing or public speaking? Yeah, I, when I saw the list of questions, I thought about this one because um, I think for me, uh, more, it's much more natural to write. And so I've been doing that for a very long time. I remember back when I was a child, I got inspired to write a tiny little mini novel, right, like in seventh <laughs> grade. So it wasn't very good. <laughs> but that was something I was really interested in. And so I've always enjoyed writing. And that's something that I think comes naturally to me. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking. Uh, is something I've had to learn and something I've had to become increasingly comfortable with over, my, over the years of my career. 
uh, particularly when you go from representing your own individual research project to trying to represent the work of many others. Andrew Siegel and I uh, were at a meeting yesterday and we're talking about how challenging that can be and how um, you really have to change how you think about how, what you're speaking about. And I think that's something that um, I enjoy doing more now, but it's, it's not as natural to me as, as the writing. Gotcha. And for those who might not recognize the name, Andrew Siegel is the UCP's Director the, of Application the Development. Director of Applications, that's right. We yeah. were in Washington, D.C. together <laughs> yesterday visiting some program managers, and we're speaking about how challenging it can be to, to speak to 25 different application projects or, you know, yeah. 80 different software technology projects. Sure. So, so uh, in addition to your time at Lawrence Livermore, uh, I know that you were also on the staff at Argonne and at Sandia mm -hmm. over the years. So about how many years have you been a part of the DOE National Lab infrastructure? So I've been with the Department of Energy for my entire career. I started as a postdoc at Argonne in mm -hmm. the early 90s. I was at Argonne for about a decade, uh, Sandia for a shorter period of time, and mm -hmm. then I've been at Livermore for about 15 years. Incredible. So. What, what was it in your life, uh, was there an event, an activity, something that kind of inspired you to take that path into high performance computing and science research, or did you just sort of stumble into it? It's a mix, I would say. <laughs> um, I would, I, when I went to college, uh, I debated a lot between should I go and become an art major or should I become a mathematics major? Decided math would pay the bills, and I got a bachelor's of art in, in mathematics. But it was a very theoretical degree and I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. So mm -hmm. I decided to go to graduate school in applied mathematics so that I could you know, take those skills and apply them to real world problems. And it was my first year in graduate school where I discovered numerical methods. I had a graduate class in that, parallel computing and numerical methods, huh. and I thought it was fascinating that you could take these really challenging physics problems that you couldn't solve analytically, break them down into simpler pieces that you could then solve numerically. And that's when I got hooked. Wow. It was my first year in graduate school. Oh, that's awesome. So um, all the other activities that you have going on in your life, what, what groups do you, are you actively involved with? Or do you even have time to be involved with any groups now that you're working with UCP? Like this? Yeah, so there's, there's two that I've been actively involved with over my career. Uh, the SIAM Professional Society, so Society for Industrial Applied Mathematics, is an organization that um, has served you know, my needs as an applied mathematician over the years. So I've been very involved in conference organizations for them, serving on their board, you know, lots of different volunteer type activities. Uh, what I'm involved with now is a supercomputing conference series. So I served as a technical program chair for SC16. Mm -hmm. And this year and next year, I'm working to understand the finances of that conference as the finance chair for SC20. Fantastic. Yeah, that's something I know a lot about, having been involved in that conference mm -hmm. for 30 straight years. It's, it's a fascinating um, organization to be a part of. Because you know, and many folks don't realize that it's run completely by volunteers. By a lot of volunteers. Uh, about, a lot of volunteers. By, by about 500 volunteers. <laughs> exactly. It's an amazing, it's amazing infrastructure that they've set up to, to make that conference a success. So you've kind of hit already on um, you know what it is that you're thrilled about in terms of working with the ECP. Let me throw out some of the ECP terms at you and mm -hmm. um, just want to talk about whatever comes to mind. Okay. Now let's start with application development. So for application development, what comes to mind the most for me is the incredible breadth of the applications that are being developed through the ECP, how many different mission areas are being uh, enabled by the applications developed in the ECP, and just the sheer technical challenges that those teams are overcoming in terms mm -hmm. of getting their applications to, to work well on the accelerated architectures of the future, the new physics that they're adding, and just, again, the breadth of, of the team and the missions that that's going to enable. I'm, I'm very excited about that. About software technologies? For software technologies, the thing that, that comes to mind for me, and, and it's partly because of my background in SIDAC, is the strong coupling that we're seeing between software technologies and the application development teams. Uh, the fact that that's a goal for the ECP is, I think, a tremendous value that we're bringing to the Department of Energy yeah. missions. The other thing that I'm really excited about in software technologies is my crew, the director for ST, is working to bring all of those products together so that we have yeah. more turnkey uh, deployment so that they are working well together out of the gate, that they're well tested. And that, I think, is very exciting and, and something that 
only because the ECP is as large as it is that, that we can tackle. So I'm, that's very exciting for me in software technologies. Okay. So Lori, how about hardware and integration? So I, I view hardware and integration as the real backbone for the ECP, in part because we have such a critical dependence on the facilities, mm -hmm. uh, the high performance computing facilities at Argonne and Oak Ridge in particular, and they are providing a lot of the connective tissue that we need to get our applications uh, deployed and performing well on those architectures, the software technologies that we need deployed and working well, they're providing training and infrastructure, they're managing the resources that those facilities are providing to us as a project and making sure that we have access to what we need to, to ensure success for the ECP. And, and as we pointed out so many times about the role of the ECP, we are not responsible for actually acquiring and, and building these no. systems. So, so the one thing that also about hardware and integration that it's, is really nice is the Path Forward program. So while we're not responsible for acquiring the systems, that program element within HI is a critical element where we're funding the vendors in the high performance computing industry to do novel research on advanced architectures. And so that's part of how we're keeping the high performance computing ecosystem healthy in the United States. And so that's another really critical component of HI. Good. But uh, the ECP project office? So this is where I've had the most to learn. Um, <laughs> again, I've never been part of a formal project for the Department of Energy before. And so just coming up to speed on everything that's involved in understanding our risks and project controls and schedule and just that entire infrastructure is very impressive. What makes it more impressive for the ECP, I think, is the fact that we are a research development deployment project at heart and we are trying to apply project management principles that were developed for construction projects. And so finding the right marriage between what we need to do to formally move the project forward and the agility that we need to do the research development and deployment in the ECP has been a very first of its kind effort where we're breaking new ground in project management practices. And that's been fascinating to be a part of. All right, and um, I guess the last one is, um, you know, a term that we throw around a lot is multi-lab collaboration. Yes, so I believe the ECP is a phenomenal example of multi-lab, multi-institutional collaboration. We are funding 15 out of the 17 Department of Energy laboratories. Uh, it's, again, the largest team I've ever been involved with in terms of the multi-institutional aspect. And I think it's great that we have a collaboration that spans the Department of Energy that's all pulling in one direction to achieve really high performance computing that will enable missions across the department. Awesome. So let me close with this one last question to you. Um, in your new role, well, relatively new role with <laughs> yes. ECP, uh, time goes fast. It does. <laughs> what, what, what would you say, uh, personally, do you see as, as the biggest challenge that you face over the rest of 2019 uh, in leading the team? So I think for me, um, you know, I've been coming up to speed. So I've been with the project about six months. Okay. And for me, coming up to speed has been a tremendous um, opportunity to learn a lot of new things. And now that I'm more comfortable with the project and the components of the project, I think moving it forward, you know, we're going to need to figure out, uh, continue to articulate the value of the Exascale Computing Project mm -hmm. to all of our stakeholders, uh, including those who are funding us in Congress. And so that's been an interesting challenge, you know, uh, clearly articulating the return on investment that we see. I think also uh, we're coming up on our, uh, what is called a critical decision two point where we will lock in the baseline for the ECP. What is our technical scope for the remainder of the project, which is another three and a half years, four years. And that is something that I've um, been tasked with helping to develop that baseline and technical scope. So that's going to be a big challenge. It's very hard to predict what the right research tasks are going to be, you know, a year in advance, two years in advance, much less three or four years in advance. And so how do we articulate that and lock that in? So this comes back to the technical scope, the project management principles that we have, and I think that's going to be a fun and interesting challenge. Okay, um, I cheated on that. I do have one more question. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> so all of us in this project work some long hours as needed, and it's quite mm -hmm. often, but what do you do when you have some downtime to recharge your batteries? To recharge my batteries. Um, so I am at heart an introvert, 
<laughs> and so I really do appreciate the downtime and having a little bit of time to, uh, I love to read. I'm, I'm a voracious reader, so I probably read, you know, a couple of books a week. Wow. I'm very fond of novels and fiction. And so that's how I, you know, kind of turn my brain off for a little while and really just enjoy. Uh, we've also been remodeling a house in downtown Livermore. And while I don't know that I would count that as downtime, it is taking <laughs> up a lot of my personal time yeah. uh, to try and finish up that remodeling project. Awesome. So. Good. Anything that you'd like to say to the general HPC community that uh, follows us and will see this, this interview? Just that I'm so excited to be a part of this project and really looking forward to the next couple of years and seeing how the Exascale Computing Project develops and as it comes into fruition and the applications start bearing fruit, I think it's going to be a really exciting time. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. We've been speaking with Lori Dyson, ECP's Deputy Director for the Exascale Computing Project. I'm Mike Bernhardt. <laughs>